Morning. How did it all begin? Well, when I was about uh, 18 years old, I was studying art and philosophy, and I'd already been doing a lot of work that involved costuming and body paint and those sorts of things. I decided I wanted to do something temporary. So for over the next three years, I planned, considered, and designed, and by the time I was 21, realized that I had a project that as a person as, and as an artist, I wanted to go forward with. Okay, so, so what was the first bit? Uh, the first part of the tattooing was a piece of the design on my back. But unlike most people who get a tattoo and then grow it out into larger and larger pieces, I actually started blank with a plan for my whole body, which I then had to break the design into pieces to do in sessions. And so how long did it take? Uh, we're at about 700 hours right now. What? And still going? And still going. What, what's, what's, what's to come? Um, you know, I have... Basically, I'm a giant coloring book. Oh, you are too? I have uh, empty scales that still need green filled in on them. I've got about 50 to 100 hours estimated left to go before I'll be filled in. And so what? Well, what's the thinking behind the timing? Do you want to wake up and go, oh, I'm going to do a bit more today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, um, really, I've become a victim of my own success. When I started back in 93... And, you know, nobody knew who I was or what I was doing, and nobody cared, quite frankly. Uh, you know, I was able to just get tattooed more and more and more. But as I started to get some notoriety and get out on the road and perform more, um, it became harder and harder to arrange times to get tattooed and be properly healing afterwards. So now I just have to find time in between tours and shows to get it done. And had you ever had a tattoo before you started this project? No, that was, so, I started so, off blank. So first tattoo was what you think, oh, damn, this is actually, this is a bit right. sore than I thought. Yeah, well, that's the, the whole idea is it, it's all well and good to say that you're going to completely transform your body, but then you actually have to go through it, right? <laughs> so I, I broke it into pieces, starting off with the sort of uh, abstract black markings that are on my back thinking that if I get these and I can handle it, then I can go ahead with the whole project. If I get these and I decide it's too much, at least I still have a reasonably complete tattoo and a story to tell. Okay, so so the pain these days is what, nothing? Oh, no, no, the pain never goes away. You just maybe get better at coping with it. So you know what's yeah. coming. Exactly, Have yeah. you become addicted to the pain? They say you can become addicted to the pain. You know, I, here's, I, I think that you know people like to throw around the word addiction in yeah. a sort of a pop culture way, and as someone who is dealt with people who have real addictions, I would never be so casual to refer as tattooing as an addiction. So it hasn't become just blasé enough for you to think nothing of it. You do go through a process oh. where you think, actually, this is... Oh, yeah, I, I know every time I go in, this is going to hurt, but I also know it's going to be worth it. You know, I relate it to pain really shouldn't be a motivation to not do something yeah. if it's worth it to you. For instance, childbirth, I'm told, is incredibly painful, but it seems people keep popping out kids. Yes, they do. <laughs> so you go from beyond the tattoo to the earrings. You've got massive right. holes in your ears. That, yes. that, that, that was part of the overall project? Well, the, the ears um, were actually just, I like the look of pierced and stretched earlobes, so I have pierced and stretched earlobes. <laughs> but at no point that was... It wasn't, it wasn't uh, necessarily part of what I refer to as the transformation project, which was based on um, the sort of art and philosophy ideas I was working on. Right. And that's really focused on the tattooing and the surgeries, like the implants on my forehead. So, the teeth so, so how do you come up with the surgeries in the forehead? Where did that come from? Uh, well, a friend of mine, Steve Hayworth, pioneered uh, what he calls 3D art implants in the early 90s. And when I saw what he was doing, I realized that there was a good opportunity there for me to incorporate them into this project of transforming my body. So I went with horned ridges over my eyes mm. to create these bumps. And they're there forever. Yeah, they are Teflon that has basically been grafted to my skull. Could you take them out? Uh, yes, but in the, only in the same way that you could take a bone out of your body as well. Whoa. You know, there's lots of things are possible, but they're not so good you're, ideas. So you're, you're committed. They're not <laughs> yes. like breast implants, for example. No, that no, could no. Be they're, it, they're, well, um, they're somewhat similar, but they're much more part of my body than a breast implant ever is in a, in a woman's chest because the connective tissue of my skull is actually growing in on a microporous level to the implants. Jeez. And your teeth you've done? My teeth have been filed into sharp points with a dentist drill. And, well, you, you can fix that, I suppose. You could... You can, I could get put caps over the top of them, yeah, 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 yeah. theoretically. Do you but, see yourself ever wanting to change yourself back or differently or... I, uh, you know, I, I, I doubt it, and I say that because I did spend three years planning and designing it. You know, more time than most people spend getting to know the person they marry and have children with. Mm -hmm. There are no guarantees. Anyone at any point in their life can regret any decision they make. But I think if you put in the work up front, the likelihood of that is greatly diminished. See, I think what people will like about you is that, that you've got the whack factor, but you've also you appear to have some brain behind it. So, so you're not just a weirdo. I like to think I have my moments. <laughs> so you make a living out of this. Yeah, I've been a professional entertainer for the last 15 years. And so, do, was that part of the plan? Well, that was uh, that was the dream when I first started doing this. You know, I said the idea when I was 18, starting school, uh, started doing it. By the time I'm 21. Uh, 
I never really thought at that point in my life that I would be able to make a living off it, but it was something that I felt I needed to do. I knew I could make a living doing other things. Mm. But as you know, the world and culture kind of turned and spun and got more interested in Sideshow again, it allowed me the opportunity to make a living at it. And you know, if you're a writer washing dishes and then your novel starts to sell, you don't keep the dishwashing job, right? So that's what I did. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Has it affected your relationship with people? Um, not really because, uh, my family is very understanding and supportive because they've seen this from beginning to end. For them, this is the natural evolution of me as a person and an artist. For my friends, obviously, they wouldn't be my friends if they weren't supportive and didn't like it. In terms of, like, meeting people, I've been very pleasantly surprised over the last 19 years of doing this that most people are just genuinely curious and want to know. Even if it's not something that they would support normally, yeah. they tend to be polite to me and that's all I ask. Fantastic. The best bit is what? The best bit for me well, was, was the tongue, uh, getting my tongue split and doing that and creating it as a procedure and bringing it to the world because now there are about four or 5,000 other people that have done it. So not only have I achieved one of my dreams, I've also allowed other people to imitators, achieve Imitators, I eh? Well, not imitators. I just think that it's a natural sort of inclination for some people. They wanted it and they never thought they would be able to have it and I was able to give it to them. Good to see you. Cheers.